some discussion about graduate school and this friend had gone to this graduate school that this cousin wanted to go to. So it was kind of like a meet and greet. And at that dinner, he also announced that we were getting married. And it was a pattern that was, you know, coming out and we still hadn't told the parents yet. Um, so I'm hopping around a little bit, but it's, it's interesting that, you know, looking back where I think about him accusing me of pressuring him to get married and putting this, giving him an ultimatum and things being rushed. And I'm looking back my recollection of the facts and the, the actual email trails and fact patterns are not really aligning with that. But once we did get married and he got caught cheating and lying, it then became, his argument was, he was forced. He was pressured. I was rushing things. What was the rush? What was the big deal? Why did we, why did we have the elopement before his bachelor party? And when he said that to me, I almost, I almost panicked for a second and, and, and was like, why did I do that? And, um, but then I remembered that mine was even later than his, like mine was being scheduled for two months later. (laughs) So, but I wasn't in a state of like, you know, I didn't have, I wasn't prepared for those types of accusations. I wasn't ready with my fact checker. Um, But I had no say in when he was planning his, his bachelor party. But I do recall him when we finally settled on a date, which, you know, I was like, oh, wow, why don't we try this date? This is actually the day we met. And I remember him being like, how do you remember that? And he he always had this thing with like bad memory for details and stuff. And that's also um, telling uh, as, you know, as I think about his lifestyle and how he juggled and and lived so many lives, like there was so much duplicity, but he didn't remember the day we met. And I was like, yeah, this was the day we met five years ago. And it's, you know, it's perfect. It's on a weekend. It'll give, um, you know, some folks time to travel. Um, and it's, it's not going to be too cold because it's early on and, you know, the fall, the uh, fall month. So that's where we settled on. And he was like, let's do it. And, um, it, there wasn't a, there wasn't a rebuttal that said, well, do you think that's too early? Or like, I'm not sure that's a date. It was just like, okay, that sounds good. So as he's, um, As he's planning his bachelor party, which he seemed to be really putting a lot of time towards, more so than our actual ceremony. Um, But, you know, it's his his first wedding, and I just wanted him to feel like, you know, nothing was going to really change between us and that this was just going to be, you know, formalizing our relationship as, you know, we had been living pretty much as a married couple and sharing a home, sharing a business and, and sharing a life together, doing things with families and friends. And, um, you know, I didn't have a lot of details about it, but he did kind of tell me that his brothers couldn't make it. And I was just like, wait, so are you still going to go? Cause like usually guys want their brothers on their bachelor parties, like not just their friends. And, he mentioned something about, you know, his brother's not being responsive and it just, it just, it didn't make any sense. And I was like, well, why don't you just postpone it until you have more, like until at least your brothers can attend, like this doesn't seem reasonable. Like, why would you go on a bachelor party? It's like, we already have a date scheduled for our, our wedding. So it's not like it's impacting, it's not happening before the wedding. So like, why not take the time to um, plan a trip at a time that at least a brother or two can join. It just didn't, it didn't, didn't make any sense. Um, and, and now, you know, of, of course I look back and know that he was planning this trip around this woman because it was also, it was her birthday weekend or week or something. So it was a, the time, time was of the essence for this, this trip to take place 
where she could join as well. Um, I le- later realized that and learned that, but uh, which was how he justified it as not being that bad because she she was just traveling because it was her birthday, and I was just like, this doesn't make any of this okay. But that's kind of where things um, were. But I remember when he accused me of being in such a rush, like, and he it was a very like, what was the rush? You know, what was the rush? What 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 were you like rushing towards? And it, it was just such a an unfair predicament that I was placed in, um, because I was getting all, I was getting all this bad news and shock and just horrific details. And at the same time, I was being accused of placing pressure on him that he didn't want. And that made him feel like he couldn't be honest. And it was just, it was crazy. Um, but the fact was, um, he was the one announcing our plans to get married. Unprompted by me, it wasn't like a tug, you know, or kick and saying, hey, tell him. Uh, it, these were all, these were not pre-discussed with me. Um, so it's just really hard to understand. It was hard at the time. I, I get it now, but I just was like, how, how does he believe that? Like, we planned, I mean, it took us months to design and fabricate our rings. We had them in our possession for months before we got married. Like, what is he talking about, a rush? Why is this being portrayed as a rush thing when we've been together for five years? It's not like we just met, you know? Um, so it didn't, the fact did, didn't make any sense. And, um, and then when he tried to accuse me of basically something nefarious, like planning this elopement before the bachelor party because I knew I knew something and it's like, hmm, like, believe me, if I knew you were he was sleeping around and having an affair, there would have never been a marriage. And he knew that. And so there was this like revisionist history of what my motives were when he was the one, in fact, with the um, nefarious motives. He was the one that was sleeping around. He was the one that was uh, planning a trip with, uh, you know, just his friends and not his brothers and, you know, with with another woman. Like, it, it just didn't make any sense. And I, the narrative was just off and... um and it took me a while to kind of re- regroup and to to just really be like, did I do that? Which was part of the gaslighting, which is a form of manipulation. Um, but it caused me to doubt my reality and the facts until I was able to clear my head and, you know, think think back and look back and go, no, my, my girls and I had a call about my bachelorette party and it was supposed to take place during Martin Luther King weekend. And, you know, we were selecting a a location and, you know, so it, it was, and it was very much, you know, after his, um, so yeah, it's dealing with something like this is bizarre. Um, the, announcing of the the marriage unprompted and without discussion with me um accusing me of putting some pressure on him when you know and 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 having a rush like we did not buy the rings from a store we had them fabricated and it's really like there and and the engagement ring was fabricated first and the only reason why that was changed was simply because of finances Um, and, um, when we did send out the elopement announcements, um, we had already had a date for the larger ceremony, which he insisted be done quickly. And he, as we were building the communication to go out, um, with the photos and, you know, just our messaging, 
he kept sending me names of people to add to the uh, the announcement. So it wasn't like he was like, don't tell anyone. He was giving me names of people I didn't even know that were part of his extended family. And he was like, oh, you should tell this person. You should tell this person. What about this person? And he kept adding them. And it gave me a false impression that he was excited about this marriage and that this was something that he was wanting to share. Um, it, it, I completely didn't recognize that his family and friends were two different buckets and that there were different selves and and realities that he was sharing with them so he wanted our friends he wanted his friends to have a different message or he wasn't ready to have that message sent out and uh, maybe because he knew he was going to be traveling and he didn't want to be shamed by some of the people that were not aware that we had planned to elope but um we had already we'd already got married um and we even you know settled on a date worked with our parents to figure out what days worked best because uh one set of parents were going to be traveling out of the country and we wanted of course wanted to make sure they were there and um and then we started talking about venues and you know it just felt like a whirlwind and I it's I started to feel stressed because I was like this is exactly what I didn't want like but you know weddings are sensitive and people feel like they want to be a part of it so we wanted to make sure we did something that allowed um, our extended family and our friends to celebrate our love and our marriage. So that was really important. And, um, you know, we set a budget and he started telling me where, like he had very specific ideas of where he wanted things to be and some, you know, places he would be interested in. And he gave that to me. I didn't run this process. I didn't drive that process. It was him. And, um, And so it was interesting because those announcements almost went out without a a last and final tweet or tweak to it. And he had asked, well, do you think we should put a a social media uh, moratorium and and just ask that people not share this, you know? And I thought, oh, that makes sense because we are, I know I was pretty private and, um, I don't share all my news on social media and I didn't think about what that was, but he was setting it up so that there wasn't any proof that he had married me. And I didn't realize that at the time, I just thought he wanted us to be able to control the messaging. And so we put that messaging in. And it went out and um, we got a flurry of congratulatory messages and excitement and um, and it was great. And um, unfortunately, the very next day was when everything fell apart. So um, it was, it's just such a bizarre experience to have gone through something like that and to be to have your reality challenged facts just completely misconstrued and um motives questioned when I wasn't doing anything wrong but marrying the person I loved after five years of knowing each other it it just to me didn't that and rush didn't fit in the same sentence in my view. Um, we had been living together for so long. Uh, we worked well together. I thought we supported each other and had just a really decent relationship. And so to be accused of forcing and rushing something and of strategically planning the event to I don't even know what what he thought that was doing it's like you were already married (laughs) it's like he went on the bachelor party trip already married um like you know I knew that I know that you know sometimes guys have a lot of fun and do things that they probably shouldn't do and you know that's that's what happens but you know I was okay with him just doing his bachelor party and um 
there was just blame and uh, 